Welcome to the Jackson Rudolph Podcast. I am your host, Jackson Rudolph, and we are back with episode 78. This episode's probably going to be a little bit shorter today because it's kind of a continuation of a discussion from the previous episode, episode 77, featuring Rashad Eugene, where it just kind of came up in conversation who are some of the best comma competitors of all time? If you guys enjoy this episode, drop some comments down, let me know. And we actually might make this into a series doing a film study on some of the best comma forms and then extend that to some of the other weapons, bow, chuck, sword, what have you. We could do it for extreme forms. So a little bit of a new concept with the film study today, but we're going to dive right into it. We're going to start back in the day or in sport karate years back in the day, in the 90s, watching two of the best comma competitors of all time go at head to head and we start with none other than the blue power ranger himself mike chat founder of the xma program uh, now you're going to notice the forms a lot of times are only going to be about a minute long um, and that kind of started in the 90s and continued into the 2000s is this kind of trend of the forms not being very long particularly extreme weapons routines only being about 50 seconds to a minute long at most and so we see, obviously, as he gets going here, a very different cutting style. We see the manipulation with the finger spin going into that reverse cut. And th just those little finger spins and manipulations he's doing like that, even though today we see releases and all kinds of crazy stuff done with the weapons, that was innovative for the time period, in addition to a lot of the tricking um, that was being innovated at the time, as you see with the aerial kicks and stuff like that. Then you get the basic kicks where Mike Chat shows off his signature control and balance of that single leg kicking combination. And then this is something that I miss about the old forms is those moments to kind of stop and slow things down for a minute, explode right back into the full speed. The speed of the game is so fast now in a lot of ways, particularly in weapons, that doing something like that might break the rhythm of the form too much. Uh, but it worked well there for Mike Chad, of course. And then, of course, as we get hit with an ad right away from State Farm, we're going to go ahead and transition to one of the competitors who was often sharing the stage with Mike Chat, and that was John Valera. And I bring up John Valera a second because John Valera has a very easily traceable lineage of comma training, uh, similar to what I've discussed in previous episodes with my bow lineage going back to Mike Bernardo. Valera has a similar similar lineage that we're going to discuss here. But first, let's just enjoy his form here from the 97 Mile High uh, Martial Arts Tournament. Beautiful 720 there going right into the pop 360 outside crescent kick. And then I love how he cracks that little smile there as he's setting up for the split. That's one thing that I loved about watching John Valera's forms, obviously, on YouTube. I wish I'd gotten to see them in person. Um, but just the charisma that he has, that little smile that he'll crack at times where he shows you that he's truly enjoying executing this routine, which is always fun to watch. And then we see the fast manipulations there. So again, a, a different cutting style, a different type of manipulation than what we would see by a lot of the modern comma competitors. And that's the perfect segue to Rudy Raynon. So Rudy Raynon was a student of John Valera. He trained under John Valera, ultimately would rise up. And as you can see, as he turns to face away from the judges, represent Team Paul Mitchell himself. And now we see the much more modern style of cutting, those huge, beautiful seven cuts going all the way across the body. We see a much higher volume of cutting as you're mixing in more and more of the seven cuts, some other unique cut, uh, cut techniques in there as well. Um, that kind of breaks outside of the older mold of just using chop punches. We're seeing a lot more diverse cutting from Rudy. And then of course, his signature manipulation there, spinning the comma blade on the finger. He would put his finger in the hole of the comma blade. So if you look close, Mostly you'll see that there's actually holes in the blade of the comma. That's where he is spinning uh, that finger spin on. In fact, as we see that crazy manipulation, I'm going to go ahead and rewind this so we can enjoy this form one more time. But on that finger spin that you're going to get to see a replay of here, he's actually putting his index finger through the hole of that comma. A lot of people mistakenly think that he just put his finger under the blade, which would obviously mean that he'd be cutting his finger if it was a live bladed weapon. Uh, but that was not the case. His finger is going into the hole of the comma, which allows him to do the manipulation without cutting his finger if it had been a live blade. And we see the setup here, multiple finger rolls in combination. There's the big finger spin. That was something that Rudy innovated and was imitated by a lot of competitors after him, both uh, comma students of his and those who uh, kind of bit the technique to use themselves. 
and just the power of Rudy's cuts and then the creativity of the manipulations, you'll notice that Rudy doesn't use any releases. All of his manipulations, all of his difficulty came from the finger manipulations and various roles that you could see him doing there. And his power and execution is what carried his routine. Um, and really it was his contemporaries that helped popularize the use of uh, releases so often in the weapons division, guys like Kalman Choka with Double Sword who were doing a whole lot of releases. Um, and then now in the next generation, as we have a look at Tyler Weaver, you are gonna start to see more release techniques. Maybe not in one of his younger forms as we see here, but definitely as he gets older. And we're watching Tyler next because Tyler was a student of Rudy. So that kind of completes that lineage there, going from John Valera to Rudy Raynon to Tyler Weaver. Mackenzie Emery was also a part of that lineage. She trained under Rudy Raynon, and we're going to watch some of her film as well, as she's one of the top comic competitors of all time. And this is young Tyler Weaver. So Tyler Weaver had two different phases to his career. He had the dominant career as a junior, and then obviously had a successful career as an adult as well. And his junior career was defined by this blindfolded comma form. Now, the more famous one is the one that he did us open that was on espn that ultimately landed him on the oprah winfrey show uh, but then of course he would repeat that blindfolded routine multiple times including here at the diamond nationals using the switchblade commas a sign of the times there in the mid 2000s to have the uh, the extra blade on the tip we see the thumb spin and then he switches it to do it with the left hand as well the thumb spin originally innovated by Dre Rice of Team Straight Up. Tyler kind of kicking it up a notch there, doing it one time on each hand. A little bit of difficulty taking off the blindfold there, but uh, you can't blame him. Very impressive to run a, a full weapons routine blindfolded like that. Um, and you don't see any releases in that form. It was primarily manipulations because he's blindfolded. So it would have been very difficult to do any, uh, any actual releases there. But now when we move on to kind of the next phase of Tyler's career, after this graphic comes off the screen showing that uh, Sammy Suddeth was the next competitor. And of course, we're going to get hit with another advertisement here. Um, but anyway, so now as Tyler made his move to the adult division and he found himself competing against guys like myself, Reed Presley, competing against a fellow comic competitor, Cole Presley, who we're going to be watching as well, he had to step up the game and do more releases to show that level of difficulty. Um, and Tyler did that very well. He answered the call and started doing a ton of releases in his forms, really when he was in the 14 to 17 division, but especially in the adult division as well. We see Ty getting the massive hang time there on the Jesus flip. And that was one thing that always impressed me so much, sharing the ring with Tyler and getting to watch him compete was just the air that he would get on those big power tricks. And very similar to the Rudy style, we see a big seven cut combination to open things up. Now there, he's actually using magnetic commas from 10th degree weaponry. That was a, a point of much debate for uh, about a year or two on the Nazca circuit, people using magnetized weapons. In my opinion, in this form, Tyler doesn't really use the magnets um, to get a, a competitive advantage. So in my book, I think this is perfectly okay. Now we notice him taking the finger spin there and then doing an upgrade of what his coach Rudy Raynon did, doing the finger spin and then throwing the zero gravity or behind the back toss while doing the finger spin. That's really impressive. We see him throwing both commas in the air there. I love to see that when athletes throw both commas at the same time. And I'm going to rewind this one just so we can pay a little bit more attention to those tricks. I don't mean to take away from the tricks uh, by talking about the fact that he was using magnetic commas. My point there is that really um, it, it added a little bit to the routine. The reason that people debated magnetic weapons is, is it an unfair manipulation of the weapon to gain an edge? And in my opinion, the way that Tyler uses them in this form does not give him any type of unfair advantage it shows some creativity uh, but really he's going to be judged on the execution of his martial arts the way he's executing his comma cuts and then the difficulty of his tricking as we see right here side swipe touchdown raise into the cork beautiful as well as the comma tricks which pretty much right on cue we're going to get a signature release combo of his tapping the comma to get it to keep rotating and then here's that finger spin right into the release, an upgrade of what his coach Rudy Raynon did. Very nicely done by Tyler there. And then we get a few more seven cuts as he goes into his closing combo. He loved using that uh, butterfly twist swing through gainer to the split. He used that to kind of get back to the front of the ring in a lot of his routines. 
And then we see the thumb roll once again with the commas stuck together with those magnets and then a strong finish from Tyler Weaver at the Diamond Nationals, one of the great stages in sport karate. It was also cool if you noticed the two videos of Tyler, we watched him as a young competitor at the Diamond Nationals and then as an adult at the Diamond Nationals, which I thought was a nice touch that I threw in there. But anyway, now we're on to another disciple of Rudy Raynon, uh, Mackenzie Emery. Uh, statistically, probably the greatest female comma competitor of all time. Um, I'd be willing to bet that she's probably accumulated the most wins as far as overall grand championships and world championships, as far as major titles, U.S. Opens, Diamond Rings, uh, of any female to ever wield commas. Um, so you, you got to put McKenzie in your top five just based on the numbers alone, but then also the execution. She was very technical with her comma cutting, very clean, very precise. Same thing with the tricking. Uh, I believe she was a level nine or 10 gymnast before she started her martial arts career. So that's where a lot of the cleanliness in her tricking comes from. Uh, and it's also impressive that she was able to carry that over from gymnastic style tumbling into martial arts tricking. Uh, that's not an easy transition to make. It can give you some of the tools that you need to be a great tricker, uh, but then mastering the art of tricking on top of gymnastics is, is difficult to do. And as we see McKenzie, a fellow team Paul Mitchell member going into the finger spin combination, little catch behind the head there showing off the releases. Um, and, and again, the, the biggest thing that I take away anytime I watch McKenzie's forms is just cleanliness. She was so, so clean, so technically precise. Um, and that's what allowed her to accumulate all the wins that she did over the course of her career. Um, and as we see the sport martial arts logo on the screen as well, a uh, huge shout out to everybody responsible for getting these videos on the internet that we're seeing right now. I highly recommend that after the film study, every Everybody goes and tries to find the videos on their own and support the original content creators, sportmartialarts.com, black and blue video, karate video guy, um, and a number of other YouTube channels that are being featured right now. And speaking of great female comic competitors, we're now going to pivot to a competitor that I feel like is often forgotten about when people talk about some of the best comic competitors ever. And that's Michaela Johnson. Michaela Johnson's a Warrior Cup winner. She's a U.S. Open winner. She won many of the major titles. And it's extremely impressive to be a Warrior Cup winner as a female. That is notoriously one of the most difficult titles for females to, to get is the Warrior Cup. There's not many over the years in forms and weapons that have been able to do it. Michaela Johnson is one of those competitors that has done it. And she did it with this comma routine. Now, clearly, this is at the Battle of Atlanta as an adult. We see the under the leg throw, the tap back the other way, throwing behind the back, catching on the other side um, the under the leg throw was really something that Michaela was one of the main innovators of as well as throwing and catching the comma behind the back there no one really did that consistently before Michaela Johnson did in her comma routines um, and in large part that's what helped make her successful is doing these releases um, that people had either not thought to do before or wouldn't dare do because of the risk factor and then speaking of that risk factor, we see the throw from behind the back with the 360 spin catch going into the Hawkeye kick and then the signature rolling one comma on the other as she finishes the routine. So Michaela Johnson responsible for a lot of the comma release innovation that we saw kind of in the early 2010s. Uh, she doesn't get the credit that she deserves all the time uh, for being one of the all time great comma competitors, in my opinion. And now we pivot to, we're going to go a little bit of a generation before that. Now we're just going to cover a couple of like random comma competitors that I always looked up to and respected. And now we have Mark Cannonizzato, definitely in the conversation for those top five comma competitors of all time. Here he is representing team straight up. He would later represent team Paul Mitchell at the end of his career. And he actually made a weapon switch at the end of his career, started doing uh, more sword routines. Uh, but here he is doing the commas, which is what he was most known for. His tricking is just a thing of beauty, the huge 540 going into the rest of that combination there with the raise and the gainer. I mean, it's just so pretty to watch Mark do his tricking. Not to mention the cleanliness of his cuts as well. So we see the big flash kick there. And now he's going to throw that beach whist round, which is a signature of his up to the front. Full extension on each of those chop punches, showing off the manipulation, adding in a little bit of footwork and movement to it as well. The textbook. Sidekick, another signature of Mark Cannonizados. He always threw that clean sidekick at the end of his routines. And much like I was talking about with Mackenzie Emery, I, I would say that the number one thing that defines Mark Cannonizado is cleanliness. He was so clean with the execution of his techniques, whether it was his cuts, his kicking. And then now we're going to see a later video of Mark. This is towards the end of his competitive career. He's now working in Hollywood as a stuntman. 
Uh, and I also wanted to highlight this video because of the uniform he's wearing. So this is during his Paul Mitchell years. And then as a part of, I believe it was martial arts super show one year, he got uh, this special Mitch uniform that has the yellow sleeves. He was the only team Paul Mitchell member to ever get this uniform, which I think is really cool. Uh, and I'm also a little bit jealous of, but uh, very cool uniform being showcased here by Mark. We also notice here he's using the switchblade commas. And so he turns the commas around backward and uses the other answer. Actually, are there switch blades on these commas i don't think there are no there's not switch blades on the end of these commas he was just using the back end of the commas for a little bit of creativity in that section uh but at some points in his career mark did use switch blade commas we see him using the finger roll manipulation going into the webster there kind of linking together the comma tricks and the tricking that's something that you always like to see um so mark Canadizato, one of the all-time great comma competitors being highlighted there as well I'm going to move on to another competitor uh, that is one of the all-time greats, maybe not for commas specifically, but just in general when it comes to uh, extreme competition. Daniel Sterling is definitely one of those names that's up there, another member of Team Paul Mitchell. And now we're going to get a chance to enjoy his comma form. I think this is the Superstar Invitational, which is actually a tournament that I'm not familiar with. This was before my time. And then we, we see him showing off that hang time, his great tricking ability, finishing the split kick before he hits the ground. That was uh, obviously a trademark of Daniel Sterling's was the air that he could get and the, the high level of tricking that he would incorporate into his routines. But then you see the common manipulation there going right to the cutting, which I like, the flash kick to the corner. Probably going to see a skip front, jump front kick back up to the front. Absolutely. It's been a staple in these comma forms for a long time, which by the way, anybody tuning in watching, it's time for that to change, kids. If you're working on choreographing your comma routines, don't just put a skip front kick, jump front kick to get yourself up to the front. Uh, do something like what Tyler did, where instead of using the skip front kick, jump front kick as a placeholder there, he would use the butterfly twist going into the gainer. Now, when Daniel Sterling was, competed, was competing, it wasn't so overused. But in today's age, it is very much overused to do that skip front kick, jump front kick coming up to the front. Now we get to who could be my favorite comma competitor of all time. It's hard to say. I love watching Austin Crane's comma forms. And right there is a great example of why that was a signature of his. The Webster pivot, do the comma release without putting the foot down, then another Webster. That is so hard to do. It's not even funny. And we're going to see Austin Crane go to work here. Originally was competing under Team Elite, but then uh, took answered the call to go on to Team Paul Mitchell along with Kalman Choka. They were a package deal. And then there we see the gainer going right into the comma release and then continuing the tricking combination. That's the type of thing that I love to see. Then we see both commas going airborne there as he switched his grip right into the finger roll. We see the beach twist to the gainer. Beautiful cuts. The seven cuts were clean, rolling one comma on the other, then going into the finger roll, the side swipe. Um, Austin Crane probably deserved, as he does a big statue there, switching the commas between his legs. Austin Crane, as I was saying, probably deserved to win more weapons overalls in his career than he did. I feel like uh, when he was in the adult division, um, there were kind of there was kind of a changing of the guard with a lot of different competitors winning that weapons overall grand at the time. Um, but Austin Crane, in my opinion, probably deserves some more of them. Um, and now we move to the uh, the modern era, which is the era that I've been competing in as kind of the, the token bow guy, if you will. And uh, Cole Presley, I will say, is the comma guy that pushed me more than any other. Uh, I'm great friends with Cole. Cole and I have known each other for a long time and we're exactly the same age. So as long as Cole has been competing, we've been competing against one another. Um, and it gives me a great deal of respect for Cole because I've seen every step of the way from when he first started competing. Um, I could see his creativity, the, the innovative style of his forms that he would put together and the way that he was able to take that from just a, a local competitors starting out representing his school, then going on to AKA and AmeriKick, and then ultimately team Paul Mitchell. Um, his progression has been incredible. We see the big 360 release from behind the back there, like we saw at the end of Michaela Johnson's routine. And then look at the speed and the cleanliness of the cuts. Not only are all of these cuts clean, but they are powerful and they are lightning fast. It's one thing that I've respected probably the most about Cole was his cutting. I, I love the way that Cole cuts. The power, the extension, the speed, it's fantastic. And then obviously everybody's going to fall in love with the tricks, like one of his signature moves here where he catches the comma rotating around. So the blade then rotating around the handle of the other comma. 
and then setting up his closing move here, balancing one comma on the other right into the release and the finish and excellent. That's probably my favorite comma form uh, that Cole's ever done. So beautiful routine there from Cole. And then Cole, if you're tuning in watching this, we got to get you on the show soon. Uh, so if you guys want to see Cole Presley come on the podcast, go ahead, drop those comments down below because I am going to try to get him on the show real soon. Uh, so yeah, lots of respect to Cole Presley. Uh, one of the greats. He did an awesome job. Uh, throughout his career, innovating, finding new ways to do releases, um, and then always uh, coming through and delivering. He did a great job of hitting those forms in some big moments. We see him on stage there at the U.S. Capitol Classics. Um, and again, he, he was one of those guys that was always making me train, right? Um, and so now we're going to jump around a little bit. We're going to look at some different eras. And then, uh, of course, if we're going to talk about any list of the greatest of all time of anything, uh, you can't forget Kevin Thompson, right? So Kevin Thompson, the greatest all around sport karate competitor in history. I've shown this video on the podcast before. I'm going to show it again because his primary weapon of choice in competition was the commas. And so we cannot do a comma film study without watching a comma, uh, comma form by Kevin Thompson. And then obviously here we see a little bit more of a traditional style. I wish you could hear the music because this is kind of an iconic demo of his that was being done to Smooth Criminal. Obviously the, uh, the zebra, pan, uh, zebra print gi pants. He does the jump split kick, looks the other way while he's in the air. So much style, power, intensity. Uh, I could never get tired of watching Kevin Thompson. We see the charisma here. He winks to the crowd as he's going through one of the slow parts, maintaining his balance the whole time, throws the sidekick. Little manipulation there, right back into the cutting. And then I believe he's getting uh, worked up to the big finish here. Almost like a seven cut cutting combination that we see there. So maybe a little bit of uh, modern inspiration, meaning that modern competitors would have inspired, been inspired by watching Kevin do cut combinations like that, which had the more traditional look. And then as he celebrates the successful demonstration, Ariel to the front of the stage, getting the crowd into it. Uh, rest in power, Kevin Thompson. Can never, 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 never forget Kevin Thompson when you're doing any type of list of, of who some of the best are. Uh, so again, commas was his kind of primary weapon of choice for competition. And we see him doing a demonstration from the early 90s with the commas there. Speaking of competitors that are just wildly entertaining like Kevin Thompson was, we have the wildly entertaining Vince Johnson. Um, now he did this, uh, we'll call it a skit as far as the opening of the form here with a comma form on multiple occasions. I believe, is this the Compete Nationals? Yeah, 2005 Compete Nationals. He's doing it here. Uh, he famously did it at the French Open where uh, a couple of other competitors, I believe it was Marcel Jones and Matt Emig, actually like aerialed into the ring to give Vince Johnson his commas to do this uh, shirtless Hakama wearing comma routine with the Karate Kid headband. Um, I mean, yeah, this, this is just great. There's, and not only is he fast and this is a good comma form, but the, all of the theatrics that went into it are extremely entertaining. Uh, I was lucky enough to get to see this form in person, maybe once or twice before he stopped doing it. Um, but yeah, watching Vince Johnson go at it and just the nonstop speed and intensity throughout this form. Uh, again, just extremely entertaining, placing the commas on the ground, all out, all intensity there at the end. Uh, it never gets old, never gets old watching Vince Johnson do that combo form. And again, we're talking about just some of these random comma forms that were entertaining. Michael Guthrie, the greatest tricker to ever live. Uh, was a sport karate competitor for a time, representing the America World Competition team. Uh, and he did get some significant wins. I believe he won a Warrior Cup in the forms division. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong about that, but he did get some big wins in the forms category. Uh, but he did weapons as well, and commas were his weapon of choice, which is common for most people that are really, really good at tricking because um, commas are a good small weapon that you can do a lot of tricks with them in your hands without a, a bow or a sword or something like that getting in your way. But one thing that I respect about Guthrie in this form is that he's doing comma cuts and manipulations. He's not just holding commas and tricking the whole time. We've seen several release techniques there as he kind of comes out of the shuriken. We see the finger rolls. So he's not just dependent on his tricking. He is using actual comma manipulations and skills. Does a little bit of a Reed Presley inspired uh, box cutter of one comma and then uses the other to pull it back to him, much like Reed would do with his double bows does a little section with the commas upside down here, right back into some more tricking. So obviously with this being the greatest tricker of all time, tricking was featured prominently in the form, but the form wasn't dependent upon the tricking, which is one thing that I love to see uh, when somebody who's otherwise known as a tricker comes out and does a weapons routine. 
Now for another one that a lot of people might not know about. We've got Ryan Redfoot of Kick Team uh, doing his flying comma routine. So flying commas, you don't see it very often in sport karate, but when you do, if somebody's doing it well, it is typically explosive. And Ryan Redfoot was one of those examples. I love using this video in particular because as we saw just a few frames ago, I'm going to go ahead and back up just to be sure that you guys can see this. But if I pause it right here and then move my thumbnail image, Ross Levine is on deck. He is waiting to do his form, which is a bow form that we have featured on the podcast before, where he does a number of incredible bow tricks, does what's called a starry night, where he rolls the bow over the shoulder, around the neck, down the chest, catches behind the back, and continues to combo from there. He puts the bow in his mouth as a gainer. It's an iconic bow form from Ross Levine. This form of Ryan Redfoot's uh, at the 2003 Diamond Nationals was in direct competition with that form. So that's a, a good uh, little tidbit there that I like to share. But anyway, so as we see typical with the flying commas, a few basic cuts at the beginning and then going into letting those commas fly. These commas are attached to, uh, to ropes that he is then executing all of these striking techniques from. A little bit of a bobble there in the left hand. Um, and now that's one thing that's interesting with flying commas because the commas are so free hanging so often, it can be hard for judges to detect when some of those mishaps are. So you really have to pay attention to when the person, when the competitor is trying to regrip the comma there, we saw him trying to regrip the comma and missing just a little bit. Uh, but otherwise love the creativity there going into that aerial jumping technique, letting the commas swing around instead of throwing a kick and then comboing that with some more tricking. That was very nice. And then a lot of times a, a flying comma routine can start to look pretty repetitive, but Ryan Redfoot did a great job of varying the techniques and always trying to spin and swing the commas at different angles um, so that you're always getting a, a little bit of a different look throughout the different sections of his form, uh, which is something that I appreciate a lot watching that as we get hit with another ad. And now we're going to show a little bit of love to the senior competitors, meaning the, the 30 plus year old competitors with Drew Derek Bisbee still active to this day. This is in the finals at the U.S. Capitol Classics with a traditional routine. And you'll see here, this is one comma attached to a long rope with a weight at the other end. And I've done a little bit of research on this. It is called a Kusari Gama. So forgive me if I'm messing up the uh, pronunciation there, but this is a Kusari Gama uh, Kata being performed by Drew Derek Bisbee, a uh, traditionalist that's been around the block a few times on the NASCAR circuit, a Warrior Cup champion in the traditional forms category. Kind of the, uh, the crowning achievement of his career was getting that Warrior Cup. I still remember watching him win it, then hoisting that cup over the head. But yeah, I still remember watching this form live, and I just remember how unique it was. I had never seen this weapon until I got to watch uh, Drew do this routine. Uh, obvious high level of difficulty, especially for a traditional routine to be manipulating there almost as if it was a flying comma, but then the whole time having to control this weighted uh, steel ball at the end of the weapon as well. Um, I, I think you can imagine there's a pretty high risk there of hitting yourself, whether in the head or in other body parts that you wouldn't want to hit during this routine. Um, so yeah, that, that form always stood out to me as just being super unique um, with a high level of difficulty for a traditional routine. Now we're going to transi transition into a couple of synchronized routines. This is a synchronized routine that I loved watching and then later in my career competing against, uh, and that is the Con Boys. So this is Jake and Josh Khan uh, doing their synchronized comma form, and, and they did this form Gosh, it was probably about a decade that they were doing this form together. Maybe I'm overestimating a little bit there, but this is a form. Obviously, here they're representing Team AKA. They would later represent uh, the American World Competition Team, if I'm not mistaken. I think at one point, both these guys were on Team Straight Up as well. So they've been through a lot of the major sport karate teams. And then we see the nice clean cutting combinations. And actually, as these guys got older and competed more, those cuts just got cleaner and cleaner, which is one of the things that I respected about them is that their form didn't change much during the time that they were doing this routine, but it consistently got cleaner and sharper almost every time you would watch it. There's kind of the signature moment as Josh does the Webster, Jake does the sidekick. Uh, there's a few sportmartialarts.com pictures of them uh, in that pose together, uh, which is pretty cool. 
Then we see staying in sync the whole time. We really haven't seen them get out of sync at all. All of these cuts are, are synchronized very well together. We see them changing positions, lots of movement throughout the routine, and then the big finish there. So the con boys in their comma form uh, always enjoyed watching that. And then another, I knew if I showed that sync comma form that I was going to be getting comments about, well, what about team air, right? And, and showing off uh, Anthony Atkins and Ryan Pinkston. So we got to highlight them here at the U.S. Open. And at the time, they're actually representing Team Charlie Lee. And this is one that if you ask a lot of people that have been around sport karate for a long time, if you say, hey, what's one of your favorite comma sync forms that you've ever seen? Uh, typically, this one with Anthony Atkins and Ryan Pinkston will be near the top of the list there. Hop over hook right into the aerial, make that two aerials in a row, right back into the cutting combinations. These two doing a very good job of staying in sync, going into the cheat 720. I like the look of the white uniforms too. You don't often see people wearing the white uniforms for the, uh, the CMX routines. We saw Rudy doing it with the white gi top, but the black gi pants in his individual form. But it's cool to see these two rocking the white gi top for the uh, extreme comma synchronized routine. A little bit of a finger roll manipulation there. And then right into the gainer. I guess you'd call that a gainer, right? If Ryan put one, uh, one foot in the hand of Anthony and then he flipped him over, it's a backflip off one foot. So it should be a gainer, right? And then the big finish there, signature pose as Ryan kind of crosses his arms and uh, Anthony has the intensity and then they finish strong there. Just so entertaining, so fun to watch and an incredible performance there on ESPN by uh, Team Charlie Lee at the US Open. Does it say what year that was? Uh, it might've said at the beginning of the video. I don't catch what year it was, but anyway. Oh, we're gonna get a slow-mo as well. I didn't watch this far into the video when I was preparing the, uh, the film study today. So here's the slow-mo, that one-legged backflip from Ryan Pinkston with the help of his teammate there. The synchronization of that little skip front kick front kick was really nice. And we see it looks like in that particular competition, they beat a Paul Mitchell team, which is notoriously hard to do in the synchronized division. Uh, Paul Mitchell prides themselves on being able to win that synchronized division more often than not. Uh, so for a non-Paul Mitchell team to win it is impressive. And then now kind of as we've evolved through the podcast, we're going to get to the present day. And I'm going to highlight two comma competitors here who I feel like are really going to kind of uh, carry the momentum for the evolution of commas and uh, continue to be successful. So here we have, uh, I believe, the overall grant champion from the 2021 Battle of Atlanta uh, for the uh, Creative Musical and Extreme Weapons category, none other than Connor Chasteen of Team Infinity. Now, I couldn't find any individual recent videos of Connor, so this one's a little bit dated. This is back in 2017 at the Diamond Nationals. However, you can still see all of his technique, execution, creativity, and difficulty shining through in this form. So I highly recommend if you have a chance to watch Connor Chastain compete live, do it because he is an active competitor right now. He competes at some of the Pro Mac events. Uh, obviously, he competes at all the NASCA events, uh, and he'll be active at the Diamond Nationals coming up here uh, in a little bit under a month. And we see there the throw from behind the back, making the catch behind the head. Now we talk about lineages before Connor has trained under Cole Presley. So you're going to see a lot of the releases that Cole Presley innovated. You see Connor trying to, uh, to take that to, uh, to his own level and uh, put a different spin on it. Uh, no pun intended right there as he spins into that little uh, unique catch there of the comma crossing the legs. That's a signature move of his. Um, so definitely easy to see with these release techniques, the influence of Cole Presley on Connor Chastain. Cole and I traveled to Team Infinity's uh, camp several times, me teaching the bow, him teaching the commas. Had a lot of good times there. And then the big finish at the end of the routine. And so Connor Chastain, at this time, this was uh, one of those always electric youth runoffs at the Diamond Nationals where you can see the crowd getting into it from, uh, from the side of the ring. Now he is up in the adult division. Uh, and he was actually um, competing at many of the recent tournaments against none other than Alex Mancius. And so this is Alex Mancius at this year's U.S. Open. Alex Mancius of Team Paul Mitchell, another guy who I think is uh, going to make a lot of waves with his comma form over the coming years. Uh, he is also a point fighter, so he is uh, one of the rare double threats in sport karate today. Most people specialize in one or the other. Alex Mancius can win the overall grand with commas or in the point fighting. Um, now he's still working on winning that overall grand in the adult division. Uh, but he's going to uh, to try to climb those ranks as quickly as possible. And I got, a, I got a lot of faith in this guy. One of the hardest workers that I've ever met. And we see him rocking the uh, the white gi top, much like Rudy Raynon did. 
And as we continue to talk about lineage, uh, Alex, in addition to training under me at times, has also trained under Tyler Weaver for his comma form. Um, and so now that kind of completes the lineage going all the way back to John Valera as we see that throw from behind the back into the trap. Ton of difficulty there. I'm going to replay that because of how cool that combo was. Uh, but anyway, so John Valera training Rudy Raynon, Rudy Raynon training Tyler Weaver, and then Tyler Weaver training Alex Mancias. We see four generations uh, in that lineage there. So that's really cool to see. And before he gets to the last section and closes out this routine, I am going to go ahead and rewind it so we can get another look at that uh, release combo there. Lots of power and intensity in the cutting, which I love to see. See even a little bit of an intensity shake in that block there, catching the trap. And I believe now he's going to set up his tricking combo. Yep, tornado kick, hook, touchdown raise, right into the cork, right back into the cuts, and then the pose. And then this is what I really wanted to get a replay of because also shameless plug here. So that release is all on his own, throwing that from behind the back. And then that release that he did where he throws the comma out and then pulls it back, I taught Alex how to do that. I showed him that trick. Gosh, he was probably maybe 13 or 14 years old when I showed him that trick. So it's cool to see him doing that in competition. Now, you don't really get the best look at it full speed when I'm trying to talk about it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click through and then I'm actually going to try to slow-mo on this part so we can truly respect this release combination here. So we're going to switch that playback speed to half speed and then check out this combination here. So into the finger rolls, throws it from behind the back. That's a blind throw, making the trap catch. Reaches out, catches that one comma on the blade of the other, pulls it back. Another throw from behind the back, makes the trap. Throw again, 360 catch. Very high level of difficulty going right into the side swipe. Love to see that from Alex Mancias. And I'll admit, I'm a, little, I'm a little bit biased. We don't need any closed captions here. Let me get the playback speed to normal. I'll admit that I'm a little bit biased towards Alex. He is my teammate. He is somebody that I've trained before. Uh, but like I said, he earns all of the bias from me that he gets because it's not just because it's my, he's my teammate. It's not just because I've taught him before. It's because this kid works harder than just about anybody I've ever seen. He is always in the dojo training. He and his mom run a school together down in Brownsville, Texas. We see the intensity and the passion at the end of that routine there. Hopefully we're going to get a couple of slow-mo replays towards the end here. Doesn't look like it. He just kind of backs up out of the ring. But yeah, Alex Mancias, always in the dojo, always training, always improving himself, both in terms of his point fighting and his, uh, his comma routine. So Alex, if you're watching this, I love you, man. I got respect for you. Keep training, keep grinding, uh, because I think you and Connor are going to have a lot of great battles uh, in that bladed division for years to come, and I cannot wait to see you guys battle it out. And then, of course, you got other competitors that are going to be in that division as well. Uh, with regard to the commas, you got guys like Alex Riggs, who won the uh, the last Diamond Nationals in the weapons division. I unfortunately broke my bow in the CMX Grand, and Alex Riggs took advantage of that opportunity and won with his comma form. So it'll be interesting to see how much he's able to come back. Um, Rashad Eugene, who was just on the last episode of the podcast, his comma form is going to be very competitive with a lot of difficulty that he brings. And then we've got some young competitors moving up. Uh, Philip Brume and his comma form is going to be moving up into the adult division in several years. Dawson Holt next year with his sword form is going to be moving up into that creative bladed division. So that men's creative bladed division, there's going to be a lot of exciting things to watch in years to come. Uh, and I cannot wait to see how that shakes out. Um, and best of luck to all of you young men that are going to take that torch from greats like Cole Presley and Tyler Weaver in the most recent generation. And before that, Mark Cannonizzato and Rudy Raynon. And before that, uh, your Daniel Sterlings. And before that, your, your Mike Chat and your, uh, your John Valera. And the list goes on and on and on. So for all you young competitors watching, especially for commas, since today commas was the, uh, the topic of discussion for the podcast, uh, study that film. Go back and watch the history. Watch the evolution of the weapon and pay attention to the key turning points, right? When the finger rolls became popular and helped Mike Chat and John Valera secure major wins. And then you see those finger rolls taken to another level by the likes of Rudy Raynon. You see the tricking complementing the, uh, the comma manipulations with Rudy Raynon and Mark Cannonizzato. And then you move up another level. You see the cleanliness of Mackenzie Emery in the women's division. You see the difficulty of Michaela Johnson in that division. And then you look at some of the recent men's competitors in that division, Cole Presley, Tyler Weaver, and the level of difficulty that they put into those routines. Uh, it's just truly special to watch that evolution. And that's true for any weapon. And that's why I plan to continue this film study series. So let me know down in the comments. Number one, what was your favorite form that you saw today? Is there a form that you've never seen before, a form that you liked the most, a form that you thought was 
was super unique. Drop that down in the comments. And if you want me to keep this series going and do other weapon specific film studies, a bow film study, a Chuck's film study, a sword film study, maybe a soft style forms film study, whatever it is, drop those suggestions down in the comments and I will consider that for future film study episodes. As for now, this was a great one. So thank you all very much for tuning in. Thank you to Black Belt Magazine for sponsoring the podcast. If you enjoyed this show, make sure you hit that share button. Drop those comments down below. This has been episode 78 of the Jax Rudolph podcast, and I'll see you next time.